Hello, hello, hello. Welcome, welcome, welcome. I am live. You're seeing the photo of my marbles that I'm working on. Let me switch here. Now I can wave to you. Hello, hello, hello. Okay. I think I have everything set, but let me get my link so that I can share on Twitter. Is my mic volume? Judy, woohoo! Judy wins. She's first. Front row center. <clears throat> All right, let me tweet. All right. Hello, Dr. Dot. Dar. We're waiting for everyone to arrive. All right. I'm going to have to plug this in in a different spot now because it's too long and I'm going to end up like pulling it out or something. Got a wire crossing in front of me. I did before, but it wasn't as long, so it was kind of up on the desk before. All right. <sighs> hey, Judy. Yeah, I have pictures to show of my desk, Judy. I'm going to do that first once people are settled and have their chairs and their snacks ready to go. Take a drink. Yes, I do have a lot of desk. Sometimes having a lot of desk is not a good thing because then you have a lot of space to pile stuff. <clears throat> okay. So let's see who else is coming in. I've got a couple of things to show. A gift from Barb Walls and then something I, a couple of things that I bought. I'm not gonna do a full demo of this today, but I'm just going to give a really quick, I don't know. If this is going to be the right link, I can't remember if I... Oh, I think it is. Okay. Got a link in there ready to share. Oh, I was going to get... Oh, I can do it in... Hold on. Let me get a... Hold on. Oh, did I get three of these? I didn't think I got three. I guess I did because I've got two... Two up there. Oh, I thought I only got two of them. Well, no wonder the other two were empty. I was thinking, I know I already painted one thing in my bee, my bee journal. <laughs> All right, I'm going to use this journal here as a demo for my Daniel Smith watercolor sticks that I've got. Okay, uh, um, hello, can you guys hear me? Sorry, if you're watching the recording, fast forward a couple of minutes. We're just waiting for everyone to come in and get settled before I start because if you start right away then people come in and they'll ask this ask a question of something not that I mind I'll, I'll say I'll answer the question and cover it again but you know saves a, a little bit hey Kimberly okay my uh 
wooden. This is just one of those cheap. It's like four dollars at Dollarama. It's a wooden wooden canvas. You can gesso out it and then paint it. It's uh, you know got half inch board around the edge. They're really nice. I use them for clay mixed media. For I did a couple with clay and um, acrylic paint and stuff. They're real fun. Okay, I'm gonna start. People are coming in. Okay, so move this for a second. All right. Okay. So the first thing is was happy mail. I got from Barb. Barb Walls contacted me and she said, I have some extra Daniel Smith watercolor sticks. I got duplicates. Would you like them? And I'm like, oh, yeah, I don't have any. I would love to try them. So she sent me these six watercolor sticks to try out. And right now, read the colors here. The drone. All right. And this little little pouch in a you know yellow envelope. You wouldn't believe what it costs to mail these to Canada. It's like ridiculous. Ridiculous. It doesn't weigh much at all. Okay. Pigment. I feel like yellow PY63. Vehicle Gum Arabic Solution Light Fastness is one. Now, is Daniel Smith is one the best or one the least? That's what I don't know for Daniel Smith. Some companies, it's like one, two, three. Some companies, one is the best light fastness and three is the worst. Few, like fugitive and some companies it's the other way around if anybody knows which way it is hello Sharon this one is Cronacridone burnt orange oh that'll be a lovely color Sorry, I read the pigment, but I didn't read the color. This is Hansa Yellow Deep. And some of them are in these really cool little cases. Um, yellow Green Blue Shade. That's lovely. So that's similar to a Viridian, but it's not Viridian. But it's similar. There we go. She sent me, I'm going to just do a quick swatch of these so I can. I'm gonna, uh, pyro Red. I love Pyro Red. Oh, good dot. So this is the last week of the shortened time difference. Imperial purple. Ooh, that will be lovely. And this is like a lemon yellow. That The Hansa Yellow Deep is a warm yellow. So this is Hansa Yellow Light. So Hansa Yellow Light is your lemon yellow. They use the same pigment. It's just ground and differently. Um, hematite genuine. Oh, that's one of those fun ones. Okay, so I have this little journal here. I'm going to take my, let's see, my medium. So I'm going to do, I'm going to swatch them two ways. 
I'm going to start with my lemon yellow here. So first, I'm going to just color a little on the paper, wet my brush, and see how well they... Oh, my brush was dirty. Well, that's not very good, Jean. Let's try that again. I don't think that's the good way to use them. Oh, that still seems to be, my goodness, what the heck color was I using on this that didn't come out very well? One moment, please. Must have been red because it's looking orange. Must have been doing my red with it or something. On my marbles and didn't get it clean. One moment. Yeah, it is. It's red. Still coming out on the baby wipe. For goodness sakes. Hi, Janet. What's your... Uh, did you get more news, Janet? Yeah, Watercolor Sticks by Daniel Smith. All right. So let's try again. If it's still dirty, I'm going to have to get some go finally so if you color on it's really hard to get it uh it's not uh, coming free very easily there so what i'm going to do is i'm going to pick it up off the stick probably what i'll do is take a slice off put it in a little half pan and use it that's probably how i'll use it all right so that's all right, so it's not a color on, and so they don't work like Neo Color 2s. You've got to get them, you've got to get the paint worked off them. All right, so that's my Hansa Yellow Light. Next, I'll go to the Hansa Yellow Medium. Oh. Television news. I thought you meant like you personally. All right. Okay. So here's the Hansa Yellow Deep. Oh, that's a lovely color. Lovely. Goes a long way. I'm going to do the Pyro Red. Oh, that is some yummy red color. Mm -hmm. Lovely. All right, the royal purple, the uh, imperial purple. Sorry, close. <laughs> Japanese imperial instead of royal. This is going to be yummy. I love imperial purple. Not as much as I love green, but it is. <sighs> Lovely. Oh, I'm going to leave the hematite to the end. So this is di um, dioxazine purple. No, hold, hold on. Uh, 
for orange. Oh, so that's like trans. That's like uh, very similar to my um, transparent orange iron oxide. It's probably the in my the M gram. It's very no. Nah, it's a little more orange though. My it's it's a little more orange than the transparent orange iron oxide. All right, and then there is this is the phthalo green blue shade. that very similar to viridian viridian is a hue though so okay i believe usually it's not a it's a man -made. hey dd i'm just watching these were a gift from barb walls she sent me some extra she had du some duplicates okay so this is the hematite which is part of their I think it's part of their specialty colors, isn't it? Hematite Genuine. I don't know a whole lot about Daniel Smith because I don't have much, many of their colors. Yeah, it's a lovely gray. Lovely, lovely. Oh, the Primatech, right. Okay. All right. My new heat gun. Oops. Pulled something else off the shelf. I know it was one of their oh sorry I didn't get the didn't get this one. Of course it would just give me a really nice bit of a phthalo green phthalo green blue shade. So that was one gift. So seven lovely colors. So I have to figure out a cute little palette solution so I can use those. I'm gonna put those up there where they're really safe. All right, now before I show you my next purchase, I want to show you I've been working on my craft room up and I'm hoping by Sunday night I'll have it all completely organized. So I'm going to start with the part of my desk that's behind me. Now, my desk My desk is shaped like this. So it's like a square horseshoe. I know, right, Dee Dee? You, well, you have to buy those separately. You buy the little cases separately. <laughs> but I don't know if I really like them. I may have to buy more of those. They seem to, to me, anyway, they wet a lot better. I had some pans of Daniel Smith watercolor, and they didn't seem to wet as well as re-wet and constitute as wet as quickly and easily as those did so hmm so this is my desk setup and my chair is here 
arms. And it's a swivel desk chair, you know, with the five legs. So it swivels. So here is where I work. All right. This is my computer. Then behind me is where I have my cameo and stuff. Got a new bookshelf here, bookshelf here. I've got pictures, so I'm going to show you. But just so you know, all right, I'm going to put it like this because this is how I'm actually sitting right now. So I'm going to show you this wall. This wall is not organized at all the way it's going to be. This is how it's still organized the way I'm using it now, okay? No, actually, I'm going to show you the one. I'm going to show you this wall first, the one behind me. Okay, so I used to have my cameo on a two-tiered um, shoe rack shelf. So I had it on the top. I had the shelf below and then a shelf like under, okay? You can buy it with two units, three units, it's five units. These can't take a whole lot of weight um, because they're like they're square, but they're hollow and they're just um, some type of plastic. Okay. Hey, Joycey. Yeah, exactly, Dee. That's about it. So normally this shelf here. The shelf, two shelves above, I forgot, you guys can't see my pointer. My, um, you guys can't see my, the second shelf above the um, cameo would normally go down on the um, rail where the cameo is. But if I did that, I wouldn't be able to open the lid of my cameo. So I left it off, put it up on top. So I have this narrow space here right above the cameo where I can put my cameo mats and accessories without wasting a tall, you know, whole space just to sit my cameo mats and et cetera, right? Okay, and so then these other shelves, I'm going to put my watercolor stuff on. I'm going to have my jelly plate there like lighter stuff. I'm going to have I'm, one of them. I'm going to have some of my uh, coloring books. Um, I'm going to have my LED, my light box there. Um, some other accessories that I want. Well, my watercolor stuff mostly and my LED box. Okay. So that's going to go behind me on that shelf. All right. All right. Then. This is the bridge, this section here, all right? So along this wall right now, oh, yeah, here I am showing you and you're not here. All right, so this wall, sorry, the wall I'm going to show you next is this wall, the bridge or the middle section. So these are two desk sections, and then this is just a piece of wood that is attached with brackets underneath and screw nails. All right, so this is the wall I'm showing you next. So on that wall, you can see I have my nice 27 inch iMac computer, which is my TV and my computer. Dr. Dot, are you being better, bad? Joycey, Joycey. Oh, no, Dot went to do thumbs up. She disconnected herself. Dee Dee, I mean. I don't know why I said Dot. Dee Dee. So I have two bookshelves. I have a third one that I still have to build. My legs and knees ran out of energy on uh, Sunday. I couldn't build the third one. But I do have another one that will go in between these two. Um, behind my computer. And since it's behind... Since the third one's going to be here behind my computer, on it, I'm going to store my old, um, not my old journals, but my art journals and all my stuff that I want near beside me, but doesn't have to be within arm's reach 
every day. I actually might even take, I might move all my stamp binders over on that one. Oh, that would be good. Hmm. I'll have to think about that. But so I'm not doing any more work though on organizing these shelf units because I have, um, let me see. These are from Dollarama and I don't like these as much because they have these ledges on the end. So if it's anything bigger, you can't lay it, but it's going to be, it's similar to this. And it, so they can go on your shelves and give you another level. So you don't waste all that space in between your bookshelves. However, what I have ordered, oh, I should show you. Um, I ordered on Amazon um, because they were um, an add-on. Oh, shoot. Hold on. They were an add-on, and they were exactly what I wanted. There, here we go. I ordered five of them. All right. So this is what I ordered from Amazon. So this is what I ordered from Amazon and see these slide out. So I can make them as long as my shelves and there's nothing up here on the ends to get in the way of what I want to sit on top. So instead of having one shelf on my bookshelf, I'm gonna have two on each shelf. Um, but the nice thing about these bookshelves is that they are, there is a lot of space between each shelf. Let me go back here and look. There is a nice big space between each shelf. So my, um, let me show you. I'm gonna take a picture and show you because I don't have them on the shelf. I have them on the shelf now. My, now ignore the mess because it's not, see the, the space between the shelves are so big that by nine by 12, my nine by 12 journals will stand up with, they're kind of leaning a little farther than normal, but there's tons, there's like a whole inch. So they're like 13 inch shelves, which is nice when you have large books that you want to go up. So I'm not disappointed that they're so far, you know, so high because I do have books that are that big. But having these to go on them is going to make them. So there, these shelves are not coming in until Wednesday. So I'm not going to do much organizing on my shelf units and then have to go and take everything down again when my other little shelves come. So I'm not doing anything more on my shelves until Wednesday. So now what does it look like here where I work? Well, this is what it looks like now, but it's not going to look like this. Ah, okay. So right now, this is what it looks like. <laughs> so I've got a lot of stuff here because with my knees and my legs, I cannot be getting up and down, up and down, up and down, up and down off my desk, out of my chair. So I have stuff right where I can reach it. Okay. All right. Take a look at this sp the spinning rack. I'm coming back to you. So right up here, that lazy Susan that has my all my little uh, green. Oops. Oh, these are my paints from Lena. They have to. I have to figure out how to use those with my M gram. I've just got them in here so they're safe, so I don't lose them. So that, that um, Lazy Susan with all these pencil bins and sh this is going to go on the bottom shelf 
okay, of my um, shelving unit. So it'll be over to the, so also the white table that it's sitting on, that can come off my desk now and I'll use it uh, uh, somewhere else. Also, where you saw my light, that has my rotating caddy with, um, it's not there now because I had it scrapbooking and I didn't bother bringing it in because I knew it was cleaning my desk. So there was no point in bringing it in here, putting it on my desk just to move it again. But it has my ca rotating caddy with my, um, it has my scissors, my bone folders. It has my corner chompers in it. Um, my rulers, um, all of that kind of stuff is in a rotating shelf. It's also going to go on the bottom shelf right here to my right. So that white table that I had up here, that is also going to come off my desk. All the journals that are underneath those two tables are going up on the um, bookshelf. They're probably going to go on the bookshelf behind my computer because I don't get them out all the time. I can still stand up and reach behind my computer. So it's still going to be accessible, but just not, um, you know, don't won't need it every day necessarily. And if I'm working in it, I'll just leave it on my desk here, right? So that's going to give me all that extra room, okay, in behind this work area. All that space I'm going to gain back for work area, especially when I, it's not so bad when I'm doing my watercolor. Because when I'm doing my watercolor, my um, palette and my ceramic palettes and my water jars are right here to my right. So it's not going to impact my watercolor as much as it's going to impact when I'm doing mixed media and scrapbooking. When I need to have space for stuff on my desk. So that's going to be good. So those are the plans. That's what's gonna happen. All right, what's next? I got a few couple items. This is exciting. I'm not gonna give a full demo. I'm just gonna kind of show how it works. There is a very good demo on how to use this binding tool. And I will share the link in a minute. But first of all, this is, we are memory keepers. And this is a hole punch that makes hole protectors. So you can um, decorate sticker paper, hole punch your one of a kind hole protectors when you're putting things in binders and whatever, or even to just use them as decorative elements on a page. So you punch and it falls out <laughs> and we can't find it because it's white. Okay. So it it punches your hole punch, your hole, hole protector. Hey, Cheryl. Welcome. Hey, Jay. Did I miss anyone else? I said Sharon. I think I got everybody else. Gaskets. Paper gaskets. I'm not going to say the other word because I don't say. But anyway, so or you can use decorative paper with double-sided tape on the back of it and punch them out. So I saw that and I thought I, I was ordering this from Amazon.com in the U.S. Because even paying the cheaper price in the U.S. And it was like $7 delivery. No, because I got the two items. It was like $9.25 delivery, which includes the custom fees. Doing it that way, it was still about $15 cheaper than ordering it on Amazon.ca. And it just takes a week instead of two days. So, like, no big deal, right? All right, so this is a um, tool to help with journal binding. So there's two types of journals that this can make. If you want to do the Japanese binding, oh, I got my paper wet. If you want to do the Japanese binding where it punches and then they, you, you can do this cool decorative um, edging 
and then they kind of open like this. They don't really open flat. They're nice for scrapbooks. I wouldn't want to make a journal that I was going to have to work in because they don't really quite lay flat, but they're lovely. The book that comes with it. So it comes with this tool. It comes with your all. It comes with the wax linen thread. It comes with a curved and a straight needle. Oh, I think I threw out the instruction book. Oh, they, I can probably download it online. Um, the instruction book doesn't give you very good instructions. It's a few pictures. But it did give templates for making cool um, Japanese binding because you use, like, colored thread and you can do different designs. I accidentally threw it out, I think. It got thrown out in the garbage yesterday. But I figured it wasn't any good. But I'm sure I can find design I, I can find designs see because you can do you can hole punch so if you want to do that kind this is like double-sided so on one side the in indent goes up so that it sits in this one or the one where it's like the valley it sits in there okay so if you're going to do like a Coptic stitch or a any stitch, okay, where you're putting your holes in the center. My paper's falling apart because it got wet. You put the mountainside down. Oops. So it grabs your paper. And you can do up to eight sheets of like heavyweight copy paper. I haven't tried it yet. If you're using watercolor paper, probably one or two sheets at a time. So you lay it down, just a couple of screws with your... All right, what happened to my other... There it is. Then you take your awl. Hmm. Well, that's lovely. I put it back away. Take your all and you poke. Now, these We Are Memory Keeper tools that they make, the punch boards, the envelope punch boards, and they have a pocket punch board, which is really cool. Makes little envelopes and pockets. They're very well thought out. Uh, I'm not sure if Zan I think Sand Xander was getting more in, I believe, Sharon. You can see that the holes here are alternately ringed in black. So every other one is ringed in black. And the center one is offset. So when you're doing your punching, these are a quarter inch away by the look of it. Yeah, a quarter inch away from each other. So if you want to do half inch, you know to go black, black, black. If you want to do an inch in between your holes, then you do every other black. So it's very easy to figure out where you want to punch your holes, how you want to punch them. Very creative. Not that pricey at all. Fairly sturdy. For klutzes like me. So very good tool. I'm going to love it. I love doing Coptic stitch, and I'm constantly making um, templates to know, figure out where to put my holes and yada, yada, yada. So this is perfect. So that's that tool. Now let's do some watercoloring. Hopefully, my final part, I'm going to finish it today. All right. Uh, all righty. Once again, this is the painting that I'm painting from, or the photo that I'm painting from. It's by Soon Warren. All right, so now I have to work on the background. So I'm going to zoom out a bit.
So I've got the red done. So now I have to do the green down here up above the red. Hey, okay, Jan. Oh my gosh, Jan, that book is to die for. Oh my goodness. How yummy is that book? Okay, sorry, I need to turn my iPad on to my photo here. Turn off my auto lock so the photo stays open. Okay. All right, so next is the screen part. I have to do another. I started with um, my lemon yellow. No, what's it called? Azo yellow. Azo yellow, also known as Arulian. Uh, Aru, 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 Thanks, Judy. The marbles are a little bit, see, I'm doing, this is a larger format than I usually do, which makes a huge difference. I'm used to painting teeny tiny marbles, right? So these ones are a lot bigger than I'm used to painting. So not, I'm not happy with all my lines, but in general, I'm happy with it. You know, you can't, can't be totally happy because then you wouldn't be a true artist. <laughs> All right, so I'm going to start with my permanent green pale, my M. Graham watercolors, of course. And I'm going to need a fair bit of it, so I'm not going to use my, uh-oh. Oh, I was like, where did my... Uh, neutral colors go. My earth tones. All right. So I'm going to go in and wet each section. So I used my oops, Azo yellow. For my first layer. Now I'm going in with the permanent green pale which is a nice, vibrant, limey green, yellow green. This is a very small area, so I just, just went right in with the paint rather than wetting it first. Hold on, I think this bottle is on a, there we go, it's on a wire. So hopefully by next Monday, I'll have my desk organized enough and have my new camera set up and test it out. I knew, I know, I just bought this camera new and I bought a new, but it's a video camera. so that I can get more into my, I do video tape on my phone and my iPad, but I want to get back into some videography and um, family video stuff, so. Not just family videos, but other Trying to do it so that I can zoom in a little bit. There we go.
Now I am going to go right back in. While this is still wet with my sap green, Just going along up and the bottom so it kind of leaves a nice bright ridge. Shining through the center and a little too much here. It's blowing a little too much. Was well, a little too wet, so I'm just gonna going in with a clean, dry brush, picking up that center. Go in with a little more dark. I don't want it to dry because I don't want to leave any solid lines between these two colors. There's one more step. I'm going to add a teeny little bit of neutral tint to the sap green. see how that picks up that color back to the bright but that wouldn't work if you didn't have the bright underneath okay so now I'm going to take that sap green and I'm going to add a little neutral tint to it not much, just enough to darken it a little bit. All right, and I put a little too much in, so I have to go back in and add a little more sap green to it. There we go. And I'm going to go in with my smaller brush. And while it's still a little wet, Gonna go with that darkest color and let it blend. It's not going to look exactly like hers in the photo, but this was how I wanted mine. So, you know, you do it the way you want it to look. Okay, I'm going to
fry it. Or should I say, Mr. Potato Head? Do I have, yes, there's still some masking fluid here in the highlight areas. I didn't take it off my uh... I'm not gonna take it off the bottom there, but. Can't take the bottom parts off yet because I still have to do that. Uh... Okay, so I still have to do this top green part. And it's much darker. So what I'm going to be doing is I'm going to be using my large brush. And I'm going to have to mix, just get a little bit more of my permanent green pail in there, make sure I have enough. And I definitely need more sap green. Oop, picked up the wrong okay a little bit more neutral tint in that because i added more green all right so i've got my three colors green i've got my permanent green pale i've got sap green and i've got sap green with a little bit of neutral tint added in to make it darker actually it needs a little bit more even There we go. Oh, good gene. To use the wrong brush, I just soaked it all up and I don't want my dark one yet. Oh, Lord. One moment, please. I need to mix more of my sap green. Oh, gene, that was wrong. Okay. Yeah. My dirty water it's really dirty already. Hey, Jacqueline, nice to see you. I need more of that anyway, so. I always forget I shouldn't mix my paints with my silver black velvet because they soak up so much paint then it's hard to get it into your well. I need to use my other paints. Okay, I'm just gonna take some of my neutral tint and put it up here on the edge in case I need it. If I need to darken that even more, there we go. All right, here we go. Wetting my top area here. 
So then at least the background will be done and I can work on the table on all the reflections and the cast shadows. So this will give me a little bit of, uh, it's gonna give me some brown. It's not gonna be really bad because it's, uh, I'm using my um, bright green right along there, some of it. And I don't consider it mud. I just consider it a nice neutral area. Then I'm going to go into some, just the regular sap green. Hope I didn't miss anything in chat. It's really hard to Follow chat when you're watercoloring because you have to work as the paint allows you to work. Hold on one moment. I just realized something. There. Didn't get my angle going there. You want to make sure it's soft. So I have to be careful as it dries. Make sure it stays. Soft and blendy. Let it move. Try and make it look a little bit like a curtain. Hey, Wendy. Hey, Marianne, no problem. Hey, Joycey. Hi, Zoe. Miss any, did I miss anybody else? I can take a break while this is kind of moving. I don't want to dry it till it gets to a spot where I want it to stop moving. So when I want it to stop moving, I will dry it. See how it granulates when you add the... Sap green granulates a little bit anyway, but when you add that neutral tint, look at that lovely texture in there. Yummy, yummy. All right, I really like that right now, so I'm going to dry it. That'll stop it from moving and flowing. Well, Vaughn, what? I've been working on this like a month. Granted, I've only worked on it during streams. So it's about, let's see, this is my fourth part. Mm, two, four, six. Yeah, so it's a lot more hours than I us it usually takes me. But like I said, my marbles were bigger. So... Um, All right, now I have to look at it and decide. I think I need a little more dark put in. Transition, I like that part, but I need a little bit more dark. So I'm going to add a little wee bit more neutral tint to my sap green mixture here. And I'm going to go in wet to dry. And then I will go along the edges 
and soften them. All right, so now clean your brush, dirty water, clean water. Dab it just a little bit, and I don't want these edges, so I am simply going to go in with my clean, damp brush along the edges, fan them out. Actually, I think I'm going to Oh, there it is. I was going to say, where did my flat brush go? I'm going to wet my flat brush. And I'm going to go in. Sweat. that. There. While it's still wet, I'm going in with a clean tramp brush and it'll pick up just a little bit of uh, color just to get a little texture in there. Some folds to make it look like a, there. All right, that's a little better. I need to pick up just a little bit along here. There we go. Like that. Move down a little bit more than I wanted it. There we go. All right, I'm going to dry that. All right, I think I like it. Okay. So that added just a little depth at the top, I think. Hey, Nick and Tina. Hello, hello, hello. All right, so now it's time to work down here. So down in this area, you can see where the green from the background is um, here, the green from the background is shining through the marble and reflecting on the glass table, okay? In all these areas, that's the, from the background reflecting down on the glass table. Here you can see the colors from the marbles, okay? The color from the marbles, all right? but then it's gonna have a gray wash over it. So it's got the marbles reflected, but then it also has a cast shadow, okay? That has a very bright reflecting spot, which I have masked off, okay? So fun, fun times is going to be happening. So. I think next I need to wet the whole um, table and I'm going to go in and I think I'm going to do my green reflections from the wall. 
Yes. I have two waters. And I use different ones. This is an old glass that I don't drink from anymore. And this is just a jar from Classico um, Alfredo sauce. I make sure I use that they're different shapes. Um, so I... So that I always remember in my mind, the round one is my clean and the square one is my dirty. Yes, you really have to keep one clean for watercolor. It's a good idea for acrylic too. Not as important, but definitely important in uh, watercolor. All right, so I need... All right, I'm going to take my own advice here and use my, I'm going to use my Cotman brush to do my paint mi uh, mixing now. I just need a little more of my permanent green. Probably don't need a whole lot. I also have a nice, Green chamois, I'll show you. It's one like this. It's a chamois. They were two for 99 cents at Walmart in the automotive section. So it's a chamois that you clean your car with. So it's nice and soft, won't damage my brushes. I have one like that down here for after I take my brush out of the water, you wipe it clean. And then I just throw it in the wash every now and then. Hi, Eileen. Oh, you fell asleep. Oh, dear. Well, all you've missed so far, I I showed my two new um, We Are Memory Keepers tools, Eileen. And I did a quick swatch of my um, seven um, Daniel Smith watercolor sticks that Barbara Walls sent me. Thank you, Barbara. Barb, I should say. <laughs> And um, and then I just did the green. I did the finish the background. I'm not sure if it's finished. The, the, the red should really be darker, but I don't know if I'm going to make it darker. It's my painting. I might just leave it. All right, so I'm going to go in. And the reason I'm wetting this whole thing is because um, I kind of want these, although it's glass, so in a way they are quite distinctive um, reflections, but I don't want them to be harsh. So I'm going to wet the whole thing, and I'm not going to soak and wet it, but I want it to wet. I want to wet the paper just enough so that it won't leave really harsh lines when I go in and do these reflections. So I think I'm just going to do that halfway part first, go that far, and then wet the rest when I get that far. Okay, so I'm going to use my medium-sized brush. Let's make sure it's clean. So I think that is all for the, oh, not this one. It's right down here. Now I'm going to go in with a tiny bit 
of the sap green. And the darker sap green. Now don't worry, it's not going to be this bright because the gray is going to go over top of it, right? In the end. So right now it looks unusual. That's the thing. When you're watercoloring and you're doing, like when Janet watercolors, she kind of does like Shauna. They do like what I what I call, I don't know if it's the correct technical term, but it's what I call it. They do more of an illustrative style. So they go in with that layer and they may do a second layer for shading or highlighting. But they don't work in numerous layers as I do, which is just stylistically different. That's all. Hey, CB, did I say fancy words? <laughs> Bye, Judy. All right. I have to take a little bit off this. I made it too fat, but it should lift. Okay, I think. I'm going to dry it. And then I'm going to lift it. I had it, the paper a little too wet, so it spread a little further. Oh yeah, Jenna does a great job with her with her water coloring. She's amazing. Amazing. But I always get uncomfortable watching people paint mushrooms though. Even though I know they're not like they're just cute little pixie mushrooms or whatever, but uh I'm allergic. Can't look at the, when I go past the real mushrooms in the uh, grocery aisle in the grocery store, I have to like turn my head. <clears throat> okay. All right. So, oh, this next part, it's the hardest part. Okay. All right. So in this reflection, Shows just a little bit of the red. Everything has to be the opposite sh opposite shape. So pyro red. Uh, actually, I'm going to mix a little bit of the pyro red. I've got my flower one out because I don't make little mixes, right? So I'm going to use this today. So these I will be doing... Uh, Wet on dry. So that, um, so I'm taking a little of pyro red and I'm putting in a little bit of um, the pyroline right into it to darken it. Although I don't think my pyroline's coming up. There we go.
most of the rest of this reflection it is gray. The, the blues don't really, I don't see them. No, it's mostly just uh, shades of gray. So I need some of my gray mix that I made with burnt umber mixed with my um, ultramarine. And I so I put about, it's about half and half out of my tube. Then I mixed it with a skewer. Actually, I may as well do a large mix of this because I'm going to need quite a bit of this. Oh, excuse me. Hey, Debbie Reddick. Hello, hello, hello. Welcome. <sighs> Sorry, I'm not getting much. Uh, trying to get my gray going here. I think I need a little bit more water in the... Because my first layer is going to have to be light. Okay. I'm trying to see my pencil mark here. I have to paint this. One moment. I'm going to have to auto lock, lock my... Uh, I can turn my iPad upside down. I think I need the next size brush. I need the next size brush. That's too small. No, it's not very often you hear me say that. My brush is too small. Oh, hold on. Hold on.
Oh, oh. Yeah, I've got way too much color there in that reflection. I'll pick some more of it up. This is 300 pound Fabriano Artistico, 100% cotton paper. Hey, Sophia. Oh, I love lobster. Ah. Okay, so my next marble. I think I'm going to. Oh, actually, I should. Cash chat while I'm here. So I'm mixing a little bit of my cat orange in pyro red to get these um, oh, okay, I'm gonna turn it back around here. Hold on, turning things back around for a minute. Oh, it's gotta be more orange. Very good at doing straight lines, am I? So I can't even follow my lines I drew. <sighs> oh well. What can you do? There. Oof. Sort of got it the right shape. Close. <laughs> oh, 
guys. Talk food make me hungry. Gosh. <sighs> and if I didn't leave enough here for my um, shadow there, I will come in with some gouache and fix it up. I hope I left enough of a shadow, but we'll see. Well, I love the king crabs, and the crabs come from Alaska. That's what we get mostly here. But of course, we get labs, lobsters from the lovely cold Atlantic. The best lobster in the world come from Atlantic Canada, just so you know. Because our water's colder, our lobster and our salmon is better, just so you know. Okay. Okay. Oh, do you guys want to see my next watercolor painting project? Want to see my next project? How's it doing for buffering, guys? Is it stay is it pretty good? I didn't see anyone complaining about buffering or anything. Oh, yes, Joycey, you would, wouldn't you? Yeah. Alaskan king crab crab legs. That's what we get down here. Yum. The casino here has them. Oh, you can eat crab legs. Oh, my goodness. Because they use the bodies for the canned crab, and we get the crab legs. Yeah. Uh, um. You want to see? Okay, here's my next project. This is down um this is down on the uh, southeast south shore of New Nova Scotia. Not bad. Okay, good Sharon. So that is my next painting project. It was a photograph by uh found it on Facebook and shared it and then the, I asked the artist if I could um paint it. So Isn't that pretty? So the challenge of that one will be the sunset because you guys know I'm not as great at sunsets are extremely difficult to do. So, all right. So the next one, we have some green reflection. We have some... Um, turquoise reflections we have some gray and we have some ultramarine so let's get my our turquoise going here i don't think i'm gonna have to use the well my, maybe i should use that because then the gray over it will I'll use cobalt and turquoise, ultramarine. Oh, yeah, ultramarine. I was gonna say ultramarine or cobalt, but I think it's more, it's all ultramarine. And then my green, which I have still have some of my green and some gray. Oh, okay. I think I'm just going to use my, going to wet it with my medium size one. 
I'm going to paint with my I'm going to try and pick up a little bit of that green. It came over a little too far. Where's my magic eraser? I don't know where it is. Supposed to be on this lazy Susan somewhere, but who knows where. I'll be okay. I'll make it work. All right. Now, just a little bit of uh, turquoise here. And that goes straight into the ultramarine. A little bit of green right here. And then some cobalt right around three the uh highlight there i'm gonna just dab oh a little bit a little bit off so that it looks just like it though
Oh, yeah, the big Alaskan king crabs. Oh, yeah, got to love them. I'm going to go back in here just with a little bit more of the green. There's the gray bled into it a little bit more than I wanted. There we go. All right, so now... Funny, I don't see any of the little bit of almost didn't notice it a moment here. A little bit of the orangey red here. All right, I'm going to dry that. Now remember, this is all still going to get a wash of gray at the end as well. So these colors aren't going to be this prominent at the end. Oops, put the button the right. <clears throat> okay. So now, all right, so now, mm -hmm. oops, I got it, I did, forgot to silence my. Just a minute, I'm texting my sister something. Okay. Let's go back to my picture.
Now to do a lighter gray as I get into these uh, highlighted areas. So I'm going in with clean water and just moving just a little bit of gray over those. Uh, so we don't get any harsh lines in the cast shadows. Hey, Gail. So I went to sleep. Oh, no, I don't fall asleep quite that quickly, CB. Sorry, I had my, shouldn't talk with my paintbrush in my mouth. So as you can see, Gail, I should zoom in a little bit here. Sorry. When you're touching the paper to see if it's dry, always use the back back of your hand or the back of your fingers. You can have oil, oils on the front of your hands. Oh, excuse me. And the palms. And if you get fingerprints on your paper... The watercolor can resist it. So it could you could be very unhappy if you ruin your <laughs> not yet, Gail. I've lost a couple, but you know, not too many. All right. Next one. So I'm going to try this one wet and dry, wet on dry instead to see if it work, you know, if it works any better. Actually, I think what I'm going to do is draw each shape. So I want to draw this blue shape with water. So that's the next one. So it goes from here.
So I'm just wetting it a little bit where that blue shape is, the blue uh, reflection. Just enough so that it'll move a little bit. But it'll still have the good defined line. And I'm going to go in with a little bit of cerulean as well on this part. I think it has a little cerulean. So, ultramarine on the edge. Mix in a little bit of cerulean. Okay. A little bit of a, a darker green reflection here. And the rest is a light gray. So remember, when you're doing a reflection of something round, the reflection is a little bit oblong. So I forgot to mute my computer as well. Mm -hmm. Oh, Lord. And my phone. They're getting me from all sides here. Attack me. <sighs> Trying to dab off the edge because I'm not supposed to be quite that defined at the edge. So as I was saying, your reflection of your round marble becomes elongated. Well, mine's not only elongated, but it's uh, darn it! One moment, please.
I'm going to dry that so this doesn't smudge over there again. I went over too far. Uh, I should have done my uh, lines a little darker. Oh, you guys are talking about my blue and turquoise marble? Yeah. It's kind of the one that's in the focal point, so that also helps make it nice. Guys are seeing stories in my marbles. How cool is that? All right, let's fix this. All right, cast shadow time. Oh, one moment, please. I forgot my cobalt. I don't know. I was hoping this would be my final part, but doesn't look like I'm going to get it finished today. But I may not. I may just finish it offline. Get the details done offline. We'll see. Got about an hour left, maybe. We'll see if my leg holds out my knees. Okay. Now, I'm not taking the, uh, what you would call it, off yet because I can't take it off till the very end when I'm ready to do the, because uh, I have to do this whole thing gray and I don't want to have to paint around my bright lights. sure how this happened but my I 
because I didn't trace the marbles, I kind of guesstimated where they went compared to the... So my reflections didn't get all in the right spot. Oh, well. I'll just pretend my light's in a different spot, that's all. Okay, this highlight spot is in the complete wrong spot. So I've got to dry that and take that, uh, sorry. I just messed it up with my fingers somehow. Put a little water on it and I shouldn't have. That highlight's in the wrong spot. So I'm gonna take that off. <laughs> And I'll paint around the highlight, I guess, because I'm too lazy to put more. Oh, I'll go in with, I'll go in with gouache for the highlight, I think. That'll be easier. Because it's in the complete wrong spot. Oh, I heat gun. Sorry, just a second. I have to draw this little airy here ah, before I go in with the red.
Oh, very true. That's right, Dee Dee. You never thought of that. Okay, so around this one we have... Some blue along the bottom. Oops. And green. The top. And then I need to mix more my gray. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Bye, CB. Uh, these cast shoulders are supposed to be kind of perfect ovals, and I've got some pretty crooked lines. It's one thing I'm not very good at that. Now I'll go in with my clean brush and smooth out these lines here, lighten them up. This has to be extremely light because it's almost white and it's not going to get the extra layer because it's not white and that's just not going to color at all because it's there messed up. So I've got a dirty smudge on my lovely painting. Oh well. I'm 
That's actually the same here. I didn't do that over here, and I should have. Oh, I just did that in the clean. Now my clean water is not as clean as it should be. Okay. All right. Now, where else did I not do that right? Right here. Because they are the reflections of the white, but because the glass table is kind of a gray glass, they're not going to be white. So I have to be careful when I go back in. <gasps> oh, she liked a Colleen tweet? <gasps> I hope. So does that mean she had... Do we know whether she had her knee? Did I miss an announcement? Did they go ahead with the surgery? Oh, sorry. I'm just changing my feet and I have to bend my knee. So I'm going to be groaning because it really hurts to bend. Oh, I have to have them up for my lymphedema, but then they lock when they're up. So then I have to bend them occasionally. These two cast shadows have to be like one, so I have to kind of try and get that line out of there. Okay, Eileen, thanks. <clears throat> All right. Okay. Could be exciting news. You heard it first here on my stream. All right. I need my yellow on this one. And it's over here in this tray. I need to add some yellow ochre in this yellow because this is yellow from a different project. I didn't have any left. Oh, I should do. Why don't I just make it in here, Jean? Ugh. Don't need that much, so I can do it in here. There. Okay. And a little bit of this. Okay. All right. This is scary stuff. So this is uh, nickel quinacridone gold. 
And I'm going to be putting just a touch of um, olive green on it. Once I get this layer of I didn't pre-draw any of these shapes in. Probably should have, but I didn't. Cerulean. And the cerulean is on either side of that quin there. And a little bit of oh, I was gonna say, where did my gray go? There it is. I switched them. Gotta make a spot for some really light gray here. All right, I lost the shape a little bit here.
stab. <laughs> oh my gosh. No problem, Sharon. Okay. Oh, gosh. Oh, don't do that. You're running away on me. Water. Okay. Now, how do I get the shape right? <sighs> so this is going to be very light. Very, very light gray here. Just water. Okay. All right. Remember to paint around that bright spot that I just put in. All right. Oops, get this marble nice and round here. a dry baby wipe. I'll use that. And if I don't have that bright spot fixed, that will be a detail at the end. All those uh, spots will get uh, fixed properly. Uh, make it look easy? Oh. Try not to groan and growl too much. The marbles looking around was not. I used my um, circle um, stencil, so I got smart that today, this time. All right, I think I have to do this one next because this one doesn't show a whole lot. So I think I have to do this one next. Mine are a little closer together, so the reflection is going to almost touch here on this. This is, 
I, I, I skewed it somehow, but so we'll just pretend the light's coming from like a little, <laughs> a little not quite center. But um, yeah, I wouldn't have this much. Let me just say this. I would not have this much patience if I was painting with acrylic because it would drive me crazy, probably, first of all. See, there are there are places in here when I go back in to do my details, I'm gonna fix up these. I mean, I don't have a straight line and my poor circular marble looks like it's deformed here. But that will come with some detailing and shading. I'll put in some shading that's not actually in the photograph in order to fix up that spot. <laughs> well, that's good, Debbie. I'm I'm glad I'm a good actress. I see it's it's no I wouldn't say it's a struggle it's hard it's learning and I always loved learning so I don't give up easily on anything those some people have known me for 8 years they know I don't give up on much okay so there's some of that same yellow coming through Right here. Then there's some green over here. See, the cast shadows are moving over this way a little more. So, yeah, so that the light is not in the cent is more on this in the center, a little left of center. So these ones are kind of moving this way a little bit. Okay, good. It's not just me. It is the shadow. I can tell by the way this, this cast shadow is, I can tell. Okay. I'm going from the highlight. It's the easiest way for me to paint to get my shapes. Okay, so now this shape is blue and it's ultramarine. Oh, that's not my ultramarine spot. My ultramarine spot must have ran out of ultramarine. Oh no, it's right here. Never mind. Found it. Okay. Sorry, I think I just went into the cobalt instead of that. Okay, so down here and from there. And then it goes. Up along the green, all the way up, and into the cast shadow. Well, that was stupid, Jean. That's all right. I'll get the ultramarine and Let's add a little water to that. There we go. Clean my brush. All right. Shapes, shapes, shapes. It's not going to look right until you step back from it. That's the thing. 
have to remember when you're up close, it's not going to look correct. So this needs to be sap green and not the other. So I need to wet up my sap green. My sap green here. Oops. Okay. Now, this one has a little more detail in the reflection even. So I'm going to start with the circular part, though. Kind of a dry brush. So if they're not touching, they probably shouldn't be touching there. That's all right. I'll go in with the orange and fix it. Where's my... So I'm going to go in with my first layer here. Thank you, Deb. Glad you could get here. Okay. All right. What goes underneath the... I've got to wait for that green to dry so I can go in with some details. There's a little bit of green here. And then there's some gray, very light. So I'm going in with this almost white to get my uh, shape here. Now I can go in with 
going to wet the green this time. I'm going to do wet on wet for the second layer. Actually, this should be a little more green right up into there. All right, so I'm going in to add one more teeny tiny cast shadow after this. Almost done. Oh, I didn't wet the whole thing. Oh, I keep forgetting what I'm doing here. Okay. Because I want to get got to get some darker areas in here, but they're kind of a uh, patchy in the reflection. So I just want to kind of let it mingle and move a little bit. Okay, let's dry that. Oh, sorry, guys. Uh, you didn't yell at me that I was off screen. Oh, my goodness. Congratulations, Z. Don't know if you'll watch my video, but yay. We're almost as excited as you are. Well, we're excited for you. <laughs> yay. She walked 20 steps already. Listen, nothing's going to keep her down. I can't believe what she did last year in Australia. That lady. I hate complaining about my poor knees when she's gone through what she's gone through and nary a complaint. Oh, man, what a strong lady she is. Oh. Oh, hey, Kathy, thank you. Lots of details still left to do, but oh, anyway. All right, so before I do this cast shadow, I'm going to do this. Um, before I do this cast shadow, I'm going to do the reflection here because it kind of has a lot of... I'm going to use my smaller brush. All right, so up here, some of that Quinn Gold. They go quinacridone gold up here where there's the reflection and a dot of orange. And then let's see. One moment. Uh, okay, so then we have a little bit of gray 
here. And then I need to add a little bit of amber into this. I need to dull down my orange mixture for this one. So I need to add a little burnt umber into it. One moment. There we go. Okay, so... I have to adjust for the picture because it's off set. It's different. Because I positioned my two marbles slightly differently than it is in the picture. So I'm just going to kind of get the right color in there. It's so far in behind anyway. Um, there's a little bit of that right up here. Okay, now. Okay. Yeah, they'll have they will have taken they will take a sample and they have to wait and see if the bacteria grows to know whether she has infection, I would think. Okay, so um I need to dry that before I can do the one moment, please. Let me there we go. Move her over. So I don't have to move my paper over. All right. Sorry. I was going to dry this little area here. <clears throat> so the cast shadow on this one that's in behind is not quite as dark as the others. Um... I think just because it's farther back, it's getting a little less. And it's not as much of it showing either. So it's more of the brighter center area that's showing. All right. So let's do these uh, cast shadows. All right. All right, so now I have to go in and take a little bit of that dark out. 
feather it a little bit around that highlight. Dab it. Okay. I've got extra highlight there. I don't know why. Ugh. All right. I'm going to have to take it out and then paint it. I can't take it off until I'm done. All right, guys. I am going to stop here because I don't have time. Let me zoom out a little bit. All right, I don't have time to do this whole table, so uh, my tummy needs me, needs food, and my needs need a little bit of movement. So I will likely do. I will like to finish this offline and then tweet a picture. Um, for the, for the ending. So thanks, Dee Dee. Thanks, Jan. Ooh. It's a work in progress. So what I need to do off camera will be to do my, um, the gray, it's like a smoky glass tabletop. That's what it is. It's smoky gray. It's glass. Um, so I have to do that. And then I just have to do some details to fix up some of the roundness of the marbles. I need to take off my highlight and fix any of those highlights. Um, because this paper is not bright white, um, my highlights that I left aren't quite bright enough in these gray areas. So I have to do one of two things. I have to go in and either do another layer of the grays in these white areas um, so that I get better highlights. And I think that's what I'm going to do rather than go in with um, white paint or because I still don't even think the white gouache is going to give enough of a sparkle perspective. So I think I'm going to go in and just add a little bit more. Like this one is like a pinky white, white part. And I think I'm just going to put back in my, um, what do you call it? I use graphics mask so I'll put my masks back in I can see where they're supposed to go they're just they just don't show up enough so I'll put my masks back on and then I will just add a little bit more color to those white areas so that the highlights show up more okay so thanks everyone oh thanks Lynn See you all. Thanks for coming. Thanks so much. It's really appreciated. Oh.